This is the story of how and why I quit smoking cigarettes. I actually saw Dave Grohl smoking on stage when I saw the Foo Fighters uh, last week. And I was thinking to myself, no, Dave, quit. You're going to get cancer. Or you're going to get COPD or something. You're too important. Did you know that smoking is the cause of one in five deaths in the U.S. annually? And tobacco is the leading preventable cause of death. They say a single cigarette contains over 4,800 chemicals, 69 of which are known to cause cancer. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm still trying to get to 3,000 subscribers, so if you could help by the end of 2021, so if you could help me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so if you were hoping to see my cat Mittens in this video, she was in the thumbnail. Sorry, she's not in this one, but this is just my story about how and why I quit smoking cigarettes. So I grew up really religious. I was forced to be a Jehovah's Witness and smoking cigarettes, that was a definite no-no. That was one of the worst things you could do according to that religion. And I remember one time I caught my mom smoking and I didn't talk to her for two weeks. I felt so betrayed and I felt like Jehovah was gonna be so mad at her. So I was always that guy telling people how bad cigarettes were and trying to get them to quit. And um, yeah, I remember telling people like, you know, every cigarette takes seven minutes off your life, blah, blah, blah. Dennis Leary has a good joke about that. He goes, um, well, you know, smoking takes 10 years off your life, but it's the 10 worst years. It's the ones at the end. It's the adult diaper, kidney dialysis effing years. You can have those years. We don't want them. I can honestly say I've got at least two people to quit smoking in all my years of badgering people. I want one guy, we figured out that um, he's, he'd spent up to $60,000 so far in his life smoking. And that actually made, was a big reason why he quit. So flash forward to when I moved to California, everyone I knew smoked. And I remember I would ask for one and just as a joke and uh, I would take a puff and I would cough my brains out and everyone would laugh. And the next week I would do it again, but I wouldn't cough quite as much the next time and so on and so on. And eventually it got to be where I started craving them. My friends had a never ending supply too. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> I understand why I did it. It gave me a light little buzz and it's just something satisfying about breathing, breathing into your lungs and blowing it out. I can't explain. It's just, I understand why I did it looking back. And if smoking wasn't so bad for you, I'd probably still be doing it. And to make things worse, I used to be a card dealer in a casino where smoking was allowed and I, I even knew people who were hardcore smokers who said, said they hated smoke being blown in their direction. And I do have to say this, and this is not being racist, but white people who smoke don't age well. I've witnessed it firsthand all those, all those years dealing at the casino. So this story I'm not proud of. I'm actually quite ashamed of it. Um, I smoked a whole pack to myself in four hours one time. I'll never forget, we, I went to an Oleander concert and anytime anyone said they wanted a cigarette, I would be like, I'll go. And then by the end of the four hours, my pack was gone. It was really disgusting. Not proud of it at all. You know, I never intended to get addicted. It just crept up on me. The first few years, I, I never smoked by myself. Of course, that changed later on. I'd say I smoked for a good nine years before I quit. Some mornings I would wake up wheezing and it would scare me and it would make me really mad at myself. I remember I, I quit 
successfully for six months. And then I went to a Murder City Devils concert in San Francisco with a chick friend of mine. And she offered me one. And not only did I fall off the wagon, I jumped. I always heard from smokers that they couldn't quit. And I used to say to them, if someone tied you up with rope, it's like you wouldn't just fall to the floor and slither across the floor until you found a lit cigarette. Eventually you would learn to live without it was my point. So how did I eventually quit? Well, I decided that starting in the year 2010, I wouldn't smoke anymore. So I bought my last pack of cigarettes and I smoked it throughout the day. And right around 11.59, I sparked up the last one and smoked it. And that was it. I always like to quote Marilyn Manson, who once said that He's not weak-minded enough to let something control him. And that's pretty much the way I, I feel also. So I went to bed and woke up the next morning and I wanted to smoke, but I didn't. You know, I had withdrawals for a couple of weeks, mainly headaches, but eventually they went away. I've always heard that cigarettes were one of the hardest things in the world to quit. And they are. You know, I just made up my mind and I stuck to it. There's not, nothing fancy about it. I didn't, I didn't wear any patches or chew any nicotine gum. I just quit. I just used my own willpower and it worked. I mean, I just said in my head, that's enough. And I stuck to it. I started craving them less and less and it's all just a bad memory now. It's been almost 12 years since I quit and I like to tell myself that after seven years, my lungs are, it's like uh, I never smoked at all since I haven't smoked for over seven years. I like to believe that whether it's true or not, who really knows? So I became a born again, non-smoker and I'm back to trying to get people to quit. I wish I never touched them. They're quite vile. Well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. If you smoke now or you used to smoke and quit, let me know. I'd love to see what you have to say. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.